Hi, if, uh, my name is Michael Laitler, leadership coach, certified trainer, and keynote speaker. If you guys ever been to my club, you guys know one of the first things I do is I always move furniture. And because of that, I'm going to move the furniture back a little bit. Hopefully without breaking the desk. Where my mom used to say that, that means somebody's out to catch a <laughs> in this case, nobody's catching a whooping, so you guys don't have to worry about that. Whew. You know what? As I was preparing for this presentation, I thought about the roles that I have. As Joel said, I'm the president of Confident Allies in Pineville, but I also, I'm also a leadership coach, certified trainer, and keynote speaker. And on top of that, I do work at the federal prison as well. So the name of this presentation is actually a Toastmaster wears many hats, and that's true. For a quick survey, I just want to go around the room. I'm not going to ask everybody. Just let me know how much time you have in Toastmasters. Five years, six five, years. Five years. Just started. Newbie. Newbie? <laughs> Three weeks. Three weeks? Two and a half. Two and a half years. If you guys, and you guys have already seen, the very first time you come to one of these meetings, what happens? You're already involved. You're already wearing many hats. You're doing roles. You're doing speeches. And that's what Toastmasters is all about. It's about going from different roles, different leadership roles, different communication roles, and developing yourself. There are so many things we can do here in Toastmasters, and it's amazing. Now, I tend not to use notes, but given the fact that th these are a lot of material in here, you guys will see me look at my notes every once in a while only because I want to reference the material that's in here. I don't want to miss anything for you guys. Is that all right with you guys if I use notes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if you say no, I'm still going to use it. I just yeah. wanted to make you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but guys, a lot of times when I do trainings, presentations, I always tell people, if you have something to say, pose it for the crowd, audience, let me know, because I have no problem with feedback. I can sit here and talk for two days, or I can talk for two minutes. I, I, you're not going to interrupt my flow. So if you want to add, if you want to say, you know what, Michael, we don't know what that means, just let me know. Now, mind you, I only have 13 to 15 minutes, so I don't know how much I can do. It, I was, when I was preparing this, it, it was tight. And if you guys ever heard keynote speakers, what they usually tell you is it's great, it's easy to do a presentation in 60 minutes. You tell them to do it in 15 minutes, and boy, they're starting to sweat because you're trying to put all that same material in 15 minutes. So I will do my best that I can to keep this concise, and I will try to be a genial presenter <laughs> as best as I can, and we'll go on and get into it. When I was sitting over there, I was thinking in my head, between Danielle's presentation and Corey's, I was like, I might not even get up today. I might just sit back there and do my presentation for the rest of the day. I was thinking, how can I follow this? Because this material isn't always the most exciting to hear about, but this is necessary for our growth. We have to know the roles we have in Toastmasters. We have to understand what it means to have a great meeting because we just can't tell Corey to come up here and say, all right, go speak. Or Daniel to say, hey, let's go speak. You have to have these roles and you have to understand what it takes to make a good meeting. And that's what we're gonna go through as quickly and as concise as possible. If you look at any role in Toastmasters, there's usually four areas that each role talks about, typically. You have what you do prior to the meeting, upon arrival to the meeting, during the meeting, and after. Now, each role doesn't cover that, but what Toastmasters is very big on is preparation. You prepare for your role, you rehearse it, you, talk, you call people for the meeting. And how do you do that? Email, text, and what you end up learning is, for example, Joel and Dan, I don't know who Dan is, I don't know if Dan's here, but. They sent me multiple reminders, what's your introduction, what's your bio, but it's good because now when they come up here, they can start preparing for what they're going to do. They're able to give you guys the best out of the hour and a half that we're here. And that leads me to the very first role in Toastmasters, the one that everybody comes for, the speaker. When you come to Toastmasters, what are you going to do? You're going to speak. That's what we're here for. My first time in a Toastmasters meeting was in Tampa, Florida. I believe in 2015, my very first time there, I was doing table topics. I had no clue what I was doing, but you know the whole point of that? They said, Michael, you came here to speak. You didn't come here just to listen to us speak, and that's where this first role comes in as speaker. So how do you really get ready for speaker? How do you take away those nerves? How do you get yourself in a mindset to where you're ready? Preparation. Knowing what your goals are, 
knowing what you want to accomplish, knowing what you're going to give your speech on, preparing. And as I was kind of telling Joel, I'm happy that this is being recorded because something that he taught me when I was looking for guidance on how to prepare for the international speech was, he said, have you ever recorded yourself? I was like, no, I never recorded myself. But the power in recording yourself is amazing when it comes to preparation. Because what can you do? You start learning the little things you don't do or little things that you're great at. And you keep looking over that and you improve yourself. And I learned that through the contest. Recording myself after speeches. Now, you can't record during the actual contest, but leading up to it, five to seven minute speeches, pull out your iPhone, your Android, whatever you use, pull out your laptop and hit the record button. Stand in front of it and picture yourself mentally in front of a room speaking. When you come time to prepare, it's easy because you're like, well, I know if when I said this point over here, I was standing over here, or when I said that point, I was over here, and I wish I was in the middle. But you can do all of that. Take notes. I write my, usually for speeches, I usually write them word for word. I did a presentation yesterday, 30, 35 minutes, I wrote it all out. But that's the way I prepare. Some people are good with outlines. Some people are good at just coming up here and talking. I'm not that good. So I have to make sure I write everything down, but that's part of my preparation. That's part of knowing who I am. The very first thing you wanna do as a speaker is that prepare, rehearse, and get yourself in a mindset to where you know you're gonna come up here and win every single time. Because look at the environment we're in. We're in a Toastmasters setting. This couldn't be a better room to be in. Toastmasters, just the overall environment is amazing. We come here, smile, attentive. We know what we're coming here for. You go to work, you do a work presentation, you do a presentation at church, you really don't know if they're paying attention or if they're going to give you feedback. But you know here as a speaker, that's what you can come here for. So you want to make sure you're thinking that I'm going to win. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to prepare myself for the best result. And, far, and when it comes to that preparation side of speaking, introductions. Now, some clubs, like their Toastmaster, will write the introduction, but it's best for you to write your own. Kind of give that person that's going to introduce you a mindset, an idea of what to write on you. So you write down an introduction, three to four lines, easy, just so they know what they're talking about. And if that person wants to add to it, let them, but give them a foundation of who you want to be known as. So introduction, preparing, that's everything you do before the meeting even starts. That's how you get there. Contact your evaluators. Let them know what your goals are. Say, you know what? I know what the project details. I know it has eight questions on it. However, I want to be better at eye contact. I want to be better at introductions. Can you evaluate me on that as well? Find certain goals that aren't on there to make you better. So you get to the meeting and you're like, man, what do I do now? Hopefully you got there early. So you can kind of get the room, kind of like you guys know what I did. I got here, I'd never been here. I wanted to know the setup. So I got here 20 minutes early. So I can kind of get the feeling of how to feel comfortable up here. Once again, get myself in that mental winning mindset. I pictured myself speaking up here. I got up here, we did a little bit with the, the camera, but I was able to get myself to that point, all preparing for a speaker role. You get here, give your presentation. One of the things that I really learned in Toastmasters is when you're done speaking, don't leave the lectern. Don't leave it right away. If you guys start watching other companies or organizations, you'll see what will end up happening. They'll say, welcome Michael Laitler, and they'll just walk off. They'll just walk off. And then what happens? There's nobody standing up here. So that's one of the things to think about as a speaker. Do not leave the podium until your, the other person comes up, or make sure you get there before they leave. And if you have to say, hey, hold on one minute. I mean, it, it won't offend them. We're in Toastmasters. So we got to have a little thick skin. After the meeting, get up with your evaluator. They're going to write notes on there, and depends on how well they write. They may not give you what you're looking for. Ask them later on, you know what? What did I, Joel, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? How can I improve? Because they may be able to give you a much better explanation verbally than they can in written format. So get up with whoever your evaluator is and ask them, hey, how did I do? All right, enough about speaker. I think I spent a lot more time on speaker than I wanted to, but... That's how important the speaker role is. We're coming here to speak. Prepared speeches, impromptu speeches, talking about leadership roles, that's what we're here for. And that's why I, I, I put a heavy emphasis on that one role because that's how important it is. Now, my favorite role in Toastmasters is the evaluation role, being an evaluator. Why? Because how do we grow? I mean, we can tell ourselves we're great. Someone else may tell you you're great. 
But being an actual evaluator, you get specific details on what makes you good. You give you, it gives you specific and exact details on what you need to improve. And that's a big part of it. That's the one thing that I, I love coming to because I know as a, as a first line leader at my place of employment in the prison, when I go give evaluations, from learning from Toastmasters, I use the sandwich method. Positive, areas of improvement, close it out with positive. I've said so many things to people and they didn't even know that it was something negative in there. But they learned from it. It wasn't me just going into and saying, hey man, you're late, you suck. It's more like, hey, you know what? You did a great job, you, you, you look good today, but you know what, you didn't show up to work on time. I look forward to you showing up work on time later. That's a simple process, but I learned that here in Toastmasters. And I think that's a big part of being an evaluator is that you give that feedback to people. You show them how to become better because that's what people want. They want this honest feedback in a safe and friendly environment. So what do you do as an evaluator? Prior to the meeting, figure out who the speaker is. Figure out who you're evaluating. Get with them. If they haven't contacted you, call them, text them, email them, do something. Hit them on Facebook, whatever it is and say, all right, I know your goals are this, I know the objectives are these three to five areas, but what are you actually trying to accomplish? If you're in your second speech, are you trying to work on your introduction better? If you're on your first speech, are you trying to learn how to stand at the podium or stand off to the side? What is it that you actually want me to look at outside of these goals? Once you get to the meeting, make sure you get the book from that person. Because the best way to evaluate them is know exactly what you're looking at. Get their competent communicator manual, their advanced series manual, whatever they're doing, and review those steps and ensure that you understand what's going on. Because once again, preparation, preparation, preparation. That's a big part of these meetings. And then you know, you give your evaluations and what do we need to do as evaluators? We need to be genial. We need to be friendly. We need to be nice during these presentations, during these, this feedback. We don't want these people out here crying going home. We want them to come back. We want to give them positive and honest feedback that's going to help them grow. When you're thinking of ways to give that feedback, do that. And we do have an evaluation contest coming up. It's a good time to practice. If you have your six speeches, you can, you can put in for it. I'd say it's, it's pretty cool when you get to go to different areas and give evaluations. Because you're not just giving it to your friends in this room. You're giving it to other people in the area, other people in the division, and other people in the district. And you learn that way. So as an evaluator, make sure before you get there, you know the, the goals of the speaker, you get their manual once you get there, and then as well in the meeting, make sure that you actually give them positive feedback for improvement. And at the end, obviously, you give them back the manual because you don't want them, you don't want to lose it. The next role is the timer. The timer is essential, is very essential to growth. Because we don't always have time for 60 minutes. Like I was saying earlier, I don't have time to sit here and give this for 60 minutes. I can, hit, I can hit each one of these points for 10 minutes at a time, easily. But I have 13 to 15 minutes, and that's an important role. Prior to getting to the meeting as the timer, ensure you know everybody's time. I don't know if you guys have a website, but a lot of times the times will be on there. Write them down ahead of time. Once you get to the meeting, confirm those times. Confirm those people who are speaking. Make sure you know, okay, this is five to seven. This is six to eight, whatever it is. Make sure you sit in a place where everybody can see the lighting because that's important as well. Because I, if you're sitting over here, I don't want to be looking over here every five to 10 minutes, so make sure you're doing that. And at the end of the meeting, of course, make sure that you give your, the, the times so people know what, what the rules are. The next is the topics master. That's what Joel will be doing later. It's just make sure you come up with some kind of theme or if there is no theme, just come up with some questions that draw people's energy out. Because once again, one to two minutes impromptu speaking, how many of us have actually done that at a job where we're sitting there like, hey, you need to go speak? Speak about what? <laughs> I've never done this before. It don't matter. Go speak. And then you're sitting up there in front of a group of like 30 people like, what am I doing up here? Table topics opens you up to that. Next thing you, at first you'll be comfortable at one to two minutes. Next thing you know, you're standing up for three to four minutes. And then after that, you're up there five to seven minutes and you don't even know how it happened. And that's because you've worked on impromptu speaking. Table topics master, so your role is, if there's a theme, base your question around that. If not, come up with your own. Once you get there, just confirm that you're still table topics. Make sure you have time for it. Look in the room, see how many speakers you have and how many people it would be. It would be best for them to speak as well. You don't want to plan for 10 people and you only have time for three. 
Then the next role is table topic speaker. Come up here and just be genial. Be excited. Be just full energy because you don't know what question you're going to get. Just be ready mentally to do that. I'm going to rush a little bit now because I see the yellow light on. I'm going to go through general evaluator and the last one will be Toastmaster. General evaluator, you have a team. You have a team of people. Okay, I'm going to keep going a lot. Okay, that's even better. All right, so I'm going to go through each of the, I have about five rolls left. I'm going to go through all of them and I'll take my time. General evaluator, you have a team of people under, under you. You have evaluators, timers, all counters, grammarians. That's your team. How do you prepare for that? Make sure you have a team. It, it, it's, it, in a room like this, it's easier, but think about it. Like Joel said, before I got to Confident Allies, I mean, and even now, I mean, we have four or five members. It's tough to be a general evaluator with team members. What, is, what ends up happening? General evaluators, the evaluator, do the timer, the all counter. One of the other members, the Toastmaster. And you have to be prepared. You have to prepare for that because you never know how many people are coming in the end. I mean, we all have lives outside of here and we have to be mindful of that. But as general evaluator, the best way to know what's going on is to make sure you have a team put together. Say, hey, you know what? I'm missing a timer. Can you come to the meeting tonight? Or if you see the person's not doing something, say, hey, you know what? I need a grammarian. Just can you help me out? Just do something of that nature. Also, you want to be in constant communication with the Toastmaster so you know how many speakers you have, who's going to be the grammarian. Just, just keep that constant contact. Um, another good thing, when you're general evaluator, make sure you sit at the back of the room. Why? Because one of your roles, or one of your main things is to be oversight. You want to be able to see everything that's going on. You want to make sure the room is set up right. I know that's sometimes Sergeant Arms, but that's kind of a general evaluator role as well. You want to make sure that you're paying attention to the mood of the room because at, at the end of the meeting, what do you do as general evaluator? You rate everything from your evaluators to the room setup to your team members, all of that. Now, one thing I'm going to warn you on as general evaluator is do not, do not go extensively into rating speakers because that's not what your role is. Now you can make one or two comments on it, but don't get to the point to where you give that person a, a second or third evaluation. Leave that to your evaluators. Empower them to do their role. I know when I was a general evaluator, especially in the beginning in my time at Toastmasters, I thought it was my role to give the speaker evaluations too. And then I started to realize that I wasn't ready my evaluators. Remember the best part of Toastmasters is evaluations? As a general evaluator, you're there to evaluate your team. If you want to say a few positive comments, that's fine. But don't go into two to three minutes evaluations of giving a whole another one because then you're going to get the person confused. And then you might make your evaluator feel like, ah, I didn't give a good evaluation because he or she had to say this, this, and this. Keep it concise to your team. Take notes. Take notes of what's going on. Because I know for me, I, I can't remember everything. I highly recommend as a general evaluator, you take notes as well. Once again, the room set up. The times, is everybody following the times correctly as far as, as the meeting progresses? I know we have an agenda, but it's more of a guideline to kind of keep you in track but we try to keep to as close as possible. And as general evaluator, you're going to rate that as well. At the end of the meeting, just there's not really much for you to do as general evaluator. Once you're done, you're done. You just kind of say thank you and give it back to the Toastmaster. Now the Toastmaster. Woo! That's probably the most important role in every meeting. And why? Because we have to have a what kind of attitude? Genial. genial. Yes, genial. You have to come up here with a level of excitement a level of passion. Why? Because you're the first person people usually see. Now, I can't be as passionate as Corey, so I'm not going to sing freedom. But if you want to start off saying, Toastmasters! <laughs> you can. But that's the point of it. You want to set the tone. You're the person in charge of getting everybody ready up here. You could take away a lot of those nerves just depending on how strong you are up here. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be patting everybody on the back saying, let's get in the game, but you have to be able to have that outline. You have to make sure that you talk to the speakers. You have to make sure that you followed up with your general evaluator to make sure you have all these roles set. And what is another role to Toastmasters? Introductions. Now, as I said before, 
in my opinion, it's the, it's the role of the speaker to give an introduction. However, no matter if that speaker gave you one or not, you need to have one. A few things to hit on is know their name, know what they're speaking from, know their objectives, which are written in every book, and know their time. At least have that much about them. Add a little bit, you know what, this is Michael's third speech, or you know what, Michael is an advanced communicator, Silver. You can add all that to that. That's, that's, that's the benefit of being the Toastmaster. You have all that power. You have the power to say, you know what, I'm going to cut something out of the meeting. That's your role. You have that oversight of the meeting. So you, as usual, what do you need to do as Toastmaster? Get here early. Once again, every role we can be following up on each other. General evaluator is the room good. President is the room good. Toastmaster is the room good. Everybody needs to try to get here as early as possible. Now, I'm not saying come two hours early and sit here and wait, but make sure that the agendas are good. Make sure that people are getting ready. Make sure your speakers are getting there. Because once again, you're setting that tone. You're greeting them, hey, do you need anything for your speech? Do you need any kind of paperwork to start your grammarian role? All the little things you need to make sure you have a good flowing meeting. I don't know if you guys realize, but everything, every role that I've talked about up to this point helps each other. No matter if you're a Toastmaster, general evaluator, a speaker, and a, just an evaluator, no matter what it is, we, it, they each build upon each other. Everybody, if they can, get a little early, because you never know. Like I said, at a club at Confident Allies, if we have four or five members there, you may turn it from, from the general evaluator to the Toastmaster. And you don't want to be kind of realized that at the last minute, but it happens at smaller clubs. Now, big clubs, I mean, I've, I've seen clubs like CenturyLink and some other places, and I don't ever see that happening there with a 40-member team, but it may. You may be surprised. You may be, what is the word that they tell me at my club? Voluntold that you're going to do a role. <laughs> Has anybody ever been voluntold yet in Toastmasters? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's ball and made. <laughs> that's not told. You're going you're to do that. But once again, that's the mindset. You get her early so you can prepare yourself because you don't know what role. You might get there and the roles may be, a lot of them may be blank. Maybe somebody called in. Maybe something happened. You don't really know. So get there a little early. As a Toastmaster, and she did a great job of it, make sure the meeting starts on time. Even if that's just coming in, hitting the gavel. Just to make sure everybody knows, hey, we're at that time limit. Make sure you know that. And once the meeting gets going, if you still got to work on the agenda, that's fine. But everybody knows that it's 6 o'clock, or excuse me, in this case, 7 o'clock, so you know the meeting's going. Lead the applause. You kind of see when Joel came up here, he led his own applause, but I think he can do that anywhere. <laughs> but make sure you're always, once again, you have that genial attitude. You're always getting people pumped up. You're always, great job. You're always the first person saying, this is great. You keep doing what you do. Because that's what you do as Toastmaster. You keep the energy flowing. Introduce everybody. Even introduce your general evaluator. Come up with some, something that's fun. I mean, you don't have to stick to the script. You don't have to stick to who they are in Toastmasters. Maybe they have an accomplishment they earned outside of here. Maybe they got a new job. Throw that in there. Whatever you can to build them up in order for them to be confident once they're standing up here in front of everybody. Now, I don't know how you guys do it with the the Toastmaster, but I know, I know one of the things it says is that the Toastmaster adjourns the meeting. I don't, I, and that varies at clubs. I know at ours, usually an officer adjourns it, but if you do adjourn it, make sure you give out the awards ahead of time. Make sure the guests are welcome. Make sure whatever you need to do, you did it all before you adjourn. Now the last two roles are support roles, and they are very important as well to the overall structure of Toastmasters, and that's the grammarian and the all counter. The grammarian, that's the word of the day. What, where do we, why, why do we even have that? It's because we're trying to work on the vocabulary as well. Give a word, or excuse me, provide a word. There you go. Provide a word. Don't, don't, don't hit me with the give part. Provide a word that we don't usually use, but can be beneficial if we incorporate it into our dialogue. That's, that's something important to do as a, as a grammarian. And obviously you have your log and you take mid-sentence stream changes. You, you document poor word uses, great word uses, whatever it is, but that's all part of the grammarian. Make sure you know your role. And it's usually a role a lot of people take when they first come in because it's you getting comfortable, you building up that ear to hear what people are saying. And the, one of the best parts about that is when you give a report, make sure you give suggestions too. Don't just tell people, oh, you said the sentence wrong. 
Make sure you find a way, if you can, to structure that sentence in a way where they can learn from it. Because if, once again, if we're not learning, then we're, we're going to defeat the whole purpose of Toastmasters. That role, whatever the sheet is you use, give it to the secretary if, the, if you guys file it for meetings. I don't know if you guys do that, but make sure you just have that. You can save it. That's just up to you guys. The last role is all counter. All counter is very similar to the grammarian. And I know at my club, when we're low on roles, we actually combine the two. But the all counter is very important because I know if you guys, I, I know you just said you started, but anybody that's been Toastmasters a couple of months, you start watching TV, oof. <laughs> it gets ugly quickly, a lot, lot quicker than it used to. And that's because now you're listening to us, so, ums. And these are people that are paid to speak. And you're thinking, can you not use these filler words? Can you come to Toastmasters for $60 every six months and come and can, can you learn something? But it's the little things, it builds your ear up. Once again, Toastmasters is building you up, not just for success here in a club, but for your life, your organization, for your church, for your family, whatever it is. And those, the all counter is important because it kind of builds that ear up. It lets you start paying attention to those words. I know for me, before I got to speech six in the competent communicator book, and I learned about the power of the pause, man, ums, So's, mm. all the little noises people make, smacking lips. Oh, that was all me. But I learned through some of the techniques to stop doing that. Like you guys probably already heard, I'll pause like I just did versus doing a filler word. Because all a filler word is because you're trying to fill in that gap. You're trying to make sure where there's no spaces, but why? Why do you have to fill in that gap? Now I'm not sitting there sitting up for 10, 15 seconds pausing. <laughs> but, but, it doesn't hurt to wait a second, catch your thoughts, and kind of restart into it. And that's the primary purpose of the all counter, is just working those fillers. And it builds your ears more than anything else. And you, you'll hear it in yourself. After a while, you're like, did I say um 36 times? You have your own counter in here. But that's part of building yourself up, building your grammar, increasing your effectiveness as a communicator. There's another role on here, the introducer, but I don't, I'm, I'm not too familiar with too many clubs that use that. I don't know if that's for a big club, but the introducer is usually the, um, the Toastmaster, typically. That's usually who uses that. Now, before I finish, do you guys have any questions on any of these roles? I know you're, 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 you're new. Any questions? <laughs> I, I'm a voluntold person. <laughs> No, it, it, it's pretty pretty straightforward. I attended last week, mm -hmm. so I kind of have a little bit of an idea, but it's pretty straightforward. I'm sure they'll throw me in there at some point, and sometimes you just gotta go in the deep end and swim. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta jump off and catch your wings on the way down. There you go. Mind you, if you guys didn't know, I'm sure it will be discussed, but all these materials, every, Toastmasters has set up everything for us. If you ever wanna learn the roles, you can go to Toastmasters and type in, uh, Toastmaster wears many hats. Type it in, and it'll give you an explanation of what's expected of you. It's also in your competent communicator manual. There's multiple places to find this because we want to set you up for success. We mean in to Toastmasters because I'm not a paid employee of them. But as a representative, I'm president, just a member, we all want each other to grow. We don't set these rooms up. We don't come together every night just because of we have nothing else to do. It's because we want to grow. In closing, I, I'm excited to have come spoken to you guys. I've kind of stepped outside of my box with speaking. I know that Prior to Toastmasters, you probably wouldn't have found me at just going to a random club and speaking to people. However, during my going on two years in Toastmasters, I have progressed. I started off as a member in April of 2016 in Confident Allies. I went to Vice President of Education, which I considered a failure that year, just because of we didn't grow our membership. And I thought that people would just come. I thought if you build it, people will come. <laughs> but it's not like that, apparently. And then I became president back in July. And I learned from my mistakes. I have a great crew down there. I have Jay McKinney. He was the winner of the pass of the, um, the table topics, or at least second place this past year, back in 2017. I also have Kim Boyd with over 20 years of experience in Toastmasters. She's a DTM, um, past district governor as well. So I, I have a great crew, kind of like Joel said, we have a great core, but the biggest thing is promotion and getting our message out. And that's all because of Toastmasters is teaching me that. And it's taken a great effect in my life, personal and professional, because it's all intertwined. Communication skills and leadership skills. And I will go ahead and say thank you 
You guys take care. If you have any questions about these roles, ask Joel. <laughs> Thank you. So much.